Welcome to episode 197 of Build Your House Yourself University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can build pretty and practical quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. The kitchen is the heart of the home, but one of the hardest rooms in the house to keep clean. You've got crumbs, smoke, grease, dirt, dust, stains, spills, and splatters to deal with. But there are practical ways to design our kitchens that will make maintaining and cleaning them easier. I have a list of 20 tips, and many of these tips can also work for bathrooms. Let's get right into it. Number one, keep lighting fixtures away from the stove. Grease and grime are produced by cooking, and anything hanging near the stove will collect that grease and grime on its surface. For lighting near the stove, stick with recessed can lights or lights integrated into your exhaust hood. If you love lighting fixtures like I do, you can add pendants, sconces, and small chandeliers several feet away from the stove in areas like above the kitchen island, in the breakfast nook, or above a sink. Number two, take cabinets all the way to the ceiling. To avoid having to wipe down the surfaces above the upper cabinets where lots of dust and grime can accumulate, take cabinetry all the way to the ceiling. Or, if you have enough lower cabinet and pantry storage, design your kitchen with no upper cabinets at all. You do lose some storage, but it gives your kitchen an open, airy feeling, and wiping down a flat wall is often a lot easier than wiping down cabinets. Number three, choose an undermount sink. An undermount sink lets you wipe crumbs and spills directly into the sink without getting the messes caught in the edged trim of a drop-in sink. Number four, put the trash bin near your sink. A trash bin within a cabinet close to the sink and dishwasher will let you conveniently scrape plates before doing the dishes. If you have the space, put the trash bin next to the sink, not directly under the sink. That way, one person can be scraping and stacking dishes, while a second person can stand at the sink rinsing the dishes. The ideal setup for most people would be dishwasher, then sink, then trash bin. Speaking of trash bins, number five, add additional trash bins wherever you might need them. Who says a kitchen should only have one trash can? Add a second trash bin near the fridge, dining room, pantry, or anywhere else you might need to dispose of trash or food scraps. If you have the space, a second integrated trash bin or even a small trash can can be added inside a buffet. Or cabinet, and that can save you several steps and make cleanup easier and faster. Number six, choose a backsplash with minimal or no grout. Backsplashes without grout are easier to wipe down. Quartz, granite, marble, porcelain, and quartzite slabs are flat, smooth surfaces that can be quickly wiped down with a rag. Just be careful of using marble on a backsplash since it's particularly porous and can be stained with things like splattered tomato sauce and wine. Solid surfaces like back painted glass, mirror, sheets of stainless steel, and even washable paint provide practical, easy to clean wall surfaces. Now, granted, tile is probably the most popular choice for kitchen backsplashes. So, if you have your heart set on a tile backsplash, consider large format tiles, which have fewer grout lines, and request thinner grout lines with more expensive but stain-resistant epoxy grout that never needs to be sealed. To learn more about epoxy grout, take a listen to episode 61 called Never Scrub Your Grout Again. Number seven, buy easy clean appliances. Look for fingerprint-resistant stainless steel appliances or choose non-stainless steel appliances with easy wipe surfaces with no significant texture. 
Check out the knobs on stoves and ovens and make sure they're not made with hard to get to crevices and ensure there's enough space between knobs to be able to get a rag, wipe or sponge between them. You'll also want to choose self-cleaning appliances whenever possible. Select coffee makers with an automatic cleaning function. Look for ovens with a pyrolytic cleaning setting. Pyrolytic cleaning is a fancy phrase meaning that the oven heats up to very high temperatures to burn off any residue. Some steam ovens have automatic steam cleaning and drying programs. I've read that ovens with pyrolytic cleaning functions clean themselves better than ovens that have a self-cleaning setting that uses steam. Number eight, if you can live without a gas cooktop, choose an induction option. An induction cooktop surface is flat and smooth without the hard-to-clean grates and recessed surfaces that you find with a gas cooktop. Cleaning an induction cooktop is as easy as wiping off a smooth countertop. But if you're a cook who loves to use gas, the ease of cleaning the induction surface may not be worth being without your beloved gas stove. Easy cleaning or gas cooking. You decide what's most important. Number nine, choose cabinetry with minimal details. Cabinets with crown molding, corbels, and decorative legs can look great in a more traditional kitchen, but you'll definitely have more surfaces to clean. Shaker cabinets are what most homeowners are choosing these days, and they're much easier to clean than those ornate, curly-cued cabinetry of the late 90s and early 2000s. But even shaker cabinets have ridges that can catch and hold crumbs and dust. Slab, flat front cabinets have no grooves or ridges that need extra cleaning attention. I recently talked to a kitchen designer and she said she thought the most low maintenance cabinets are flat front cabinets without pulls or knobs. That way you can simply wipe the cabinet fronts down without having to maneuver around grooves and hardware. I always thought that large cabinet pulls kept cabinetry cleaner. And I've even said that in past episodes. And technically, that's true. Anything that's on your hands like flour or oil will get on the cabinet hardware and not on the cabinet fronts if you use a large pull to open cabinetry. But what I realized from talking to that kitchen designer is that you would still have to clean the dirty cabinet hardware. And wiping down a flat front cabinet is much easier than wiping down and around a large cabinet pull. I was concerned about the cabinet finish being able to withstand regular cleaning, but the designer said that most quality cabinet finishes, especially factory finishes, should be able to withstand regular wipe downs. If you're planning on purchasing lesser quality cabinets for budgetary reasons, the cabinet finish might not be as resilient. That designer suggested push to open hinges so you can use clean forearms, elbows, and hips to help open drawers and cabinets when your hands are dirty. Or simply wiping your hands before opening the cabinets. Flat cabinets won't go with every style of kitchen, especially more traditional kitchens. But if you like flat cabinets and they work well with your kitchen, consider this easy to clean option. Number 10, select maintenance-free countertops. Today, there are more choices for non-porous, stain-resistant countertops than ever. They can easily be wiped down and never have to be sealed. Quartz is probably the most popular choice, but you might also choose a porcelain slab or stainless steel countertop. Corian is a solid surface material that's still on the market. I actually have Corian in my current kitchen. But I would think twice about putting that easy-to-clean countertop in a new kitchen because that material is not as highly valued today as it has been in the past. Quartz is probably the way to go, or stainless steel. Number 11. Use durable paint. Kitchen walls need to be washed more than any other walls in the house. Choosing a paint that's made to be wiped down will make cleaning walls easier. In episode 194 called Kid-Friendly Design, we talked about washable and scrubbable paints. 
Do you remember the difference between washable and scrubbable paint? Well, Washable paints are made to release common household stains with little physical scrubbing. They require only a little water or at most a light detergent on a cloth for stain removal. If too much scrubbing is done on a washable paint, you might scrub through the finish, leaving the surface blotchy and making the finish or sheen inconsistent. The surface must then be restored with touch-up paint or a complete repainting. Scrubbable paints, on the other hand, can withstand much more abuse and scrubbing pressure, but it takes more effort to remove stains from scrubbable paint. If you're a messy cook who consistently needs to remove stains and splatters from your kitchen walls, you should probably choose a scrubbable product so the sheen and finish aren't compromised over time. Choose a washable product If you only occasionally stain your kitchen walls, the washable paint will release the stain the easiest. Oil-based paint is also a durable product that can stand up to regular wipe downs. But oil-based paints are not near as popular as they used to be because they take longer to dry, they can crack and yellow over time, and they have very strong fumes as compared to latex paints. Number 12. Avoid or minimize open shelves. Perfectly styled open shelves look beautiful and they're very popular, but they can be high maintenance because they are open places where dust, oil, and grime can settle. And to look pretty, they do need to be styled and maintained. Not only will dust and dirt settle on the shelves themselves, Also, on any dishes, glasses, or anything else that you place on the open shelves. So not only will you have to move objects to dust the shelves, but you'll have to dust the objects themselves. If you just love open shelves, but want to spend less time cleaning them, use mostly cabinets and limit the number of open shelves you have in your kitchen. And put shelves several feet away from your cooktop, so less grease and grime will settle there. The next thing on our list will also help to keep your open shelves and all parts of your kitchen cleaner. Number 13. Have a strong exhaust hood installed. Invest in a range exhaust hood that's powerful enough to remove dust, dirt, smoke, and grime. A good vent hood will take most grease, dust, and grime to the outdoors, away from your kitchen, so dirt and grime are less likely to settle on indoor surfaces. Avoid ductless or downdraft vents or those over-the-range microwave filters that pull air in but simply recirculate that stale air and put it back into the kitchen. Those exhaust solutions won't work as well as exhaust hoods that take stale, greasy air and odors completely out of the kitchen. For gas cooktops or ranges, look to the cooktop manufacturer's guidelines for the recommended amount of ventilation you need. But a general rule of thumb for gas cooking is that your exhaust should have 1 CFM for every 100 BTUs. CFM stands for cubic feet per minute and describes the amount of air movement. And BTU stands for British thermal unit and is a measure of heat energy. Although the rule of thumb is getting a vent hood again with one CFM for every 100 BTUs, and that's for a gas cooktop, you'll ultimately want to follow or exceed the recommendations of the manufacturer of your cooktop, whether you choose a gas, electric, or induction cooktop. Number 14, choose flooring that's not too light and not too dark. Both very light and very dark flooring can show crumbs, dust, footprints, stains, smudges, and splatters. Choose a medium colored floor that can better hide dirt until you get a chance to sweep and mop. Number 15, opt for flush cabinet ends. When they're not sitting against a wall or appliance, The end of a run of cabinets will be exposed. Those exposed ends of cabinetry 
can either match the pattern of the cabinet fronts or have a smooth and flush end. Flush ends are flat and sleek, so they can be easily wiped down. Even a matching shaker cabinet end will take a bit more effort to clean than a completely flush flat end. Number 16. Choose easy to clean kitchen chairs and kitchen island stools. Chairs and stools made of wood, metal, lucite, resin, leather, and vegan leather are easy to wipe down. If you would rather have upholstered chairs or stools, select performance fabrics. Performance fabrics have a factory applied fabric protectant, or they've been woven with yarns or fabrics that are inherently stain resistant. You can also cover indoor seating with stain and water resistant outdoor fabrics. Number 17. Opt for stained cabinets if you want to see the fewest stains. Both painted and stained cabinets can show stains, scratches, fingerprints, and marks, but these imperfections are less visible on stained cabinets. Choose medium toned stained wood with a more pronounced grain pattern for the greatest amount of camouflage. Stained cabinets are also easier to touch up than painted cabinets are. You can use one of those stain touch-up markers that you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot to fill in scratches. Touch-up paint can be used for scratches on painted cabinets, but it usually doesn't blend in as well, and touch-ups are more noticeable on painted cabinets. Number 18. Choose good quality semi-gloss painted cabinets. Some of us have been dreaming of painted cabinets, so if you don't want stained cabinets, go for good quality painted cabinets, especially factory finished painted cabinets, which can withstand regular wiping and washing. Poor quality paint jobs and low-end painted cabinetry from big box stores may not give you the durability needed for regular wipe downs. If you want painted cabinets with minimal maintenance, choose a semi-gloss paint that's not too shiny and not too matte. A cabinet painted with semi-gloss paint will hide fingerprints and scratches better than either glossy or matte painted cabinets. Matte cabinets typically hide smudges, scratches, and stains better than glossy cabinets will, but a big exception is grease. Greasy smudges stand out like sore thumbs on a contrasting matte surface. And as you know, Grease and oils are often used in the kitchen. Glossy cabinets, because they reflect the light, often show fingerprints and stains. An advantage of high gloss cabinets, though, is that they're really easy to clean, so those more noticeable fingerprints and smudges may not be a huge issue for you since you can get rid of them pretty easily. But the easiest to keep clean painted cabinets have semi gloss paint. Semi-gloss gives you the best of both worlds, hiding fingerprints, smudges, and grease better than their high-gloss or matte counterparts. It's not that you'll never see grease or fingerprints on semi-gloss cabinets, but you'll see them less readily. Number 19. Steer clear of high-polished hardware and faucets. Polished Shiny chrome, nickel, and stainless steel faucets, pulls, and knobs show fingerprints and water stains much more than matte or brushed finishes will. Consider matte black, oil rubbed bronze, satin bronze or brass, or brushed nickel or stainless steel if you don't want to have to consistently wipe away fingerprints and water stains. And number 20. Choose flooring with minimal grooves and crevices. If you want tile in your kitchen, select large format tile to minimize grout lines. You can also ask your tile guys to install the tile with the least amount of grout recommended by the manufacturer. And don't forget to request easy to clean stain resistant epoxy grout. Luxury vinyl plank flooring will also have tiny crevices or no crevices at all. And linoleum with minimal texture is super easy to clean. But let's face it, most of us want to extend the hardwood flooring we have in connecting living areas 
into the kitchen. If you choose easy to install pre-finished wood flooring in your kitchen, you'll have to live with beveled edges, which form crevices and grooves between planks. These grooves are spaces where crumbs and spilled liquid can get stuck. So needless to say, it's difficult to clean those crevices. To make cleaning easier, look for pre-finished floors with micro bevels, which form tiny crevices that are less likely to accumulate as many crumbs. You can also choose wider planks, which will give you fewer crevices. The ultimate easy-to-clean wood floor is a site-finished wood floor, where unfinished planks are installed and then stained on site. Unfinished planks fit tightly against each other, and they have no crevices between them. This produces a completely smooth floor that's easy to sweep and mop. A low-maintenance, easy-to-clean kitchen is important to most of us, so study this list and decide which suggestions make the most sense for your plans and preferences. You don't have to incorporate all or even most of these features, but even adding a few of these design features can make your time in the kitchen more productive, more enjoyable, and less stressful. If you enjoyed this episode and know someone who could be helped by these suggestions, you can share the show with them by text or email, or you can share the show on your social media channels. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you learned as much as I did. And I hope you'll join me again next week for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home. 